I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love. Now, the police service tends to have somewhat of an image problem. Being as they are the foot soldiers for the laws made by successive governments. Still, popular media has always tried to rectify this image problem, giving us several friendly, approachable bobbies over the years. All of which brings me to today's topic, Hot Buzz. Released in 2007, Hot Fuzz is a blazing police action movie set in a sleepy English village. A super-focused city cop is retired to the village of Sandford, which seems to be picture perfect, but there's a dark secret waiting underneath. So grab your shades, shine up your shoes, saddle up your horse and come on down to Sandford for a heaping helping of Hot Fuzz. Meet Nick Angel, Super Cop. And Advanced Cycling, the highest arrest record for any officer in the net. Unfortunately for our hero... 400% higher than any other officer. Yes, straight to hero. No messing about with protagonist here. He's a little too much cop for the Met to handle. I know what you're going to say, but the fact is, you've been making us all look bad. If we let you carry on running around town, you'll continue to be exceptional, and we can't have that. Great plan! Make everyone mediocre and watch society crumble! And so, leaving behind a strained relationship, to tell you in person. our big city behemoth heads for the small rural town of Sandford, Gloucestershire. <laughs> and even before he officially starts his post, Nick Angel is cleaning up the town. Excuse me. What? When's your birthday? 22nd of February. What year? Every year. Get out. Well, it just goes to show that it never pays to smart mouth a police officer. Not that I know from experience, but... Stories get swapped around at Legion Poker Night and... Let's just say, it's always been quite the education. The next morning, we meet the locals. Morning, Sergeant. Morning, Sergeant. Lock me up. I'm sorry? A slasher. A crisis. Timothy Dalton, ladies and gentlemen. Every inch the oily supervillain. And, of course, Sandford's finest. So you've already met my boy. Detective Sergeant Wainwright and Detective Constable Cartwright. That is Sergeant Tony Fisher, PC Bob Walker, and that is Saxon. And this is one Doris Thatcher. She's our only policewoman. They don't immediately warm to the city slicker. Well, your choice to come down here and tell me how to do my job, our job. All except Danny, that is. Sergeant Angel? I've experienced my fair share, yes. Did you cook any fools? Excuse me? Did you shoot anyone? That evening, Sergeant Angel attends a mixer for the Neighbourhood Watch Alliance. How do you do, Sergeant? Simon Skinner, I believe you've met. Oh, we're already firm, friends. Well, the look on Sergeant Angel's face says it all. I mean, what can I add? You're an agnostic. I think I have a cream for that. <laughs> <laughs> and as the days go on, Sergeant Angel finds it hard to adapt to the slow pace of country life. Any questions? Hi, hi, Tim Messenger. Uh, can I get a quick shot for the San Francisco? Sergeant Angel. Morning, the swans escaped. The swans escaped. Sergeant Angel shares a few nuggets of wisdom. You have to look closer, all right? What about this guy? Maybe he's trying to hide something. Police work is not about proper action. This is the most important piece of equipment you will ever own. This notebook has saved my skin more times than I care to mention. That night, our pair represent the local service at the Andram production. The bad Romeo is Martin Blower, local solicitor, terrible actor, and having an affair with one of the secretaries from council planning. But then comes the first in a slew of tragic accidents. Must have hit the sign at some speed. Why can't we see accident again? Because accident implies there's nobody to blame. That night, Nicholas Angel bears his soul. He bought me a police pedal car when I was five. 
But I never forgot the clear sense of right and wrong that I felt at the wheel of that pedal car. I had to prove to myself that the law could be proper and righteous. You would have made a great Muppet. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the epic bromance of this movie, Nick Angel and Danny Butterman. Do you ship it? Our pair then give the local millionaire a lift home. It's rustic aesthetic, isn't it? The next day is a nice church fate. Hi, hi. Mr. Messenger. I need to talk to you about George Merchant. Hello. The churchyard, three o'clock. But local newsman Tim Messenger is about to meet his fate. Sergeant Angel suspects foul play. Nicholas. Which doesn't make him popular. I was extremely shocked when I looked at my watch and discovered that I should be in the pub. Well, did you go to his Even Danny rejects him. He said an all. Oh, did you not? Yeah. You don't know how to switch off. Ah, how it breaketh my heart to see when young lovers they quarrel. The next day is oh, Danny's God, birthday. Of a fire in the station. What? Our hero rushes to make amends with an emergency gift. You're going somewhere, Miss Tiller? Uh, yes. I'm moving away. But gets more than he bargained for. Angel pursues, but this dark-clad destroyer is surprisingly quick on his feet. Nobody believes him at the station. Except it was just another nasty accident. What are you suggesting? Am I going completely mad? But with all the evidence, Sergeant Angel prepares to make a collar. I know who did it. Unfortunately, while plausible, our hero's narrative is far from the truth. Entertaining, but I rather think you've been watching too many films. The stress begins to show. She tripped and fell on her own shears. Or so Inspector Butterman would have our hero believe. Do yourself a favor. Sleep on it. But an assassin is waiting for the tenacious sergeant. <laughs> and in dispatching, Lurch. Hey, Biggin. Playtime's over. Angel receives the final piece of the puzzle. Good. Proceed to the castle. And watch him and call your dad. Tell him I was right. What are you going to do? I'm going to bust this thing wide open. If I need this. Oh, foreshadowing. Sergeant Angel arrives at the secret meeting. Sergeant Nicholas Angel, Sanford Police Service. But sometimes... Truth is stranger than fiction. Blower's fate was simply the result of his being an appalling actor. These people died for no reason, no reason whatsoever! The corruption goes to the very top! Was head of the Women's Institute, chair of the Floral Committee. On the eve of the adjudicator's arrival, some travellers moved into Callaghan Park. We lost the title, and Irene lost her mind. She drove her Datsun Cherry into Sanford Gorge. Yes, this whole thing spun out of a widower's grief. What's it coming to when even the crimes of passion are this complicated? But Sergeant Angel is still quick on his feet. 
and almost escapes. But shock! It was all a trick! Ta-da! What are you doing? You've got to help me take him down! Calm! I can come back and I can bring the Blue Fury of the Metropolitan Police Service with me! The Blue Fury of the Metropolitan Police Service? I'd say stuff official vocab's guidelines it's a force you want against this kind of opposition. Forget it, Nicholas. It's Samford. And so, Sergeant Angel leaves. Is there anything I can do for you? No. This is something I have to do myself. Thus dawns another beautiful day in Sandford. Little do they know, however, that this is the day of reckoning. Now, the guns Sergeant Angel is arming himself with used to belong to a farmer who said that he found them. Needless to say, without a license, they were quickly confiscated. Morning. An improbable shootout ensues. Let us stop this mindless violence! But I know right, and I know wrong. And I have the good grace to know which is which. And our heroes reconcile. Pub? And in the pub, Danny finally sees the truth. It's only now that I'm starting to realise how ridiculous it all is. If she could see what you've become, I think she's probably kill herself all over again. And we'll be skipping the Siege of Summerfield. It's got a lot of nice character moments, but very little actual plot. But Frank absconds with Skinner. We should get down there. While Nick and Danny pursue. <laughs> and it all comes down to a final battle in the model village. Not your village anymore! But Frank's not quite done yet. Pack it in, Frank, you silly b no, no. And while he manages to get to the car, Frank Butterman didn't reckon with an errant swan. But there's still one loose end to deal with. You know what you are. A bloody busybody! He's alive! They're lovely. Thus do we close this tale, as our heroes answer a new disturbance. Little Hand says it's time to rock and roll. Bring the noise. So that was Hot Fuzz. And no, it isn't a family film. But I'm still gonna put it into the House of Love. Yes, it's gory, violent and sweary as all hell putting even Universal Soldier to shame in those respects. But the difference is that Hot Fuzz clothes itself in its audacity. It's a big, dumb action movie in a quaint little English village. It's ridiculously OTT, wholly unsubtle in its homo-romanticism, and quite simply a love letter to movies that probably would have never gotten into the House of Love on their own. On the other hand, it is a gory, sweary, violent film. It's not for children, that's for sure. With twisted plots of murder, adultery, and greed. It's every inch of the thriller in its first two acts. But it revels in Edgar Wright's kinetic visuals and dynamic style, and it just sizzles off the screen. So, if you're old enough, I strongly recommend you check it out. It'd be a crime not to. So thanks for watching, and join me next week for more fun and frolics. Mind how you go.